today we're going to be looking at Leonardo da Vinci and we're going to be studying his approach to drawing a dragon. And as we um, look at his dragon, we're going to be also thinking about what, how we're going to roll this over to our own uh, work uh, ourselves. So I'll just, for a moment, I, I'm not really knowledgeable about dragons and things of that sort, but it's interesting that the first mention of the word dinosaur came about, I think, in like 1841. Um, but he um, classified the first, uh, you know, as paleontologists and that field was coming about, I should say, people are exhuming, you know, the remains of, of these dinosaurs. Um, they needed a new category for it. But before 1841, everything that was kind of like exotic and just was all mashed together into the word dragon. So with that, let's jump over to Leonardo da Vinci and look at some of his work. So Leonardo da Vinci, one of the things that he says in his work is that um, when you're drawing a dragon, that uh, you can reference the things in the world around you. Specifically, um, there's a biography on Leonardo da Vinci by Giorgio Vasari. And so Vasari um, personally knew da Vinci, and um, he quoted da Vinci as saying, take, quote unquote, the head of a, mustaf, of a mastiff or a pointer, the eyes of a cat, the ears of a porcupine, the muzzle of a greyhound, the brow of a lion, the crest of an old rooster, and the neck of a tortoise. So like, let's go through that. So he took the head of a mastiff. So like, that's like a pretty ferocious, you know, like a territorial dog, right? Uh, or a pointer, the eyes of a cat, the ears of a porcupine, the muzzle of a greyhound, the brow of a lion, the crest of an old rooster, and the neck of a tortoise. So like, you know, you can see all these different things. Look at the, the bat wings that he drew right there. I think those wings are so cool. As we do, as we jump into our drawings today, um, I want to show you how I will do sketches of um, things in nature. <clears throat> but then I'll also, um, in this day and age in which we're living, I'll make use of the things around us. Things like um, Pinterest and Google searches and Wikimedia. So I will jump on and I'll go on Wikimedia and I'll just look up a bunch of different animals that I can think of. So we're going to take all these different things, we're going to put it all together. I like to, whenever I use images from photographers, I always give them credit. So this is the names of all those uh, different men and women that uh, took these images. And so with that, I stitched them all together into like one, one collage so that as we're working, we can jump back and forth and we can look at our references and then we can create our own things. So let's say this is a 2B. I'll also go sometimes with something darker. This is a 7B pencil. Um, and then I'll go with like a little bit of a lighter pencil. That's a 4H. Uh, something, you know, things along these lines. So you can see some are very dull and some are very sharp right here. And then I head back to my paper and I usually start with the 2B right here. So I'm just gonna flip back and forth and look at my collage and say, hmm, what are the elements that I wanna use here in my drawing? What do you guys say? What would you like to use for his face? I'm thinking the possum face is definitely like, like look at that thing, like turning around and staring at you. Do you guys agree that that would be something cool? So, all right, cool. So I'm gonna have the possum face and he's gonna be turning around and his face is gonna be like that, looking at us. Now, I can't make the head too big because the, then the body's gonna read as being pretty small, but I'm just gonna reduce that possum's face to nothing but like geometric essence. So like this, the main part of the head is a sphere right here. The nose is nothing more than a cone. So I have the sphere leading to the cone like so. The lower mouth is almost like a triangle. That's like, it's almost like I'll do a blowout over here. It's almost like a triangle like this. That's the lower mouth. And so I'm thinking of it as being like a triangle, just like so. And then I'm gonna give that triangle a little bit more dimension. So over here you could, if you wanna make a triangle into something dimensional, you can like go like that. Like I've, I've clipped the end of the triangle, but you know, you see what I mean. 
And then jumping back to here, I'm going to give it a little bit more dimension. And so now we have that kind of like that, that snarled possum face that's turning and staring at us. So, okay. So now for the eyes, um, I have a little trick with the eyes. So I can't quite get this close enough for you to see it, but I want to show you something totally wacky uh, for what I do when I have to draw eyes. But the only way that I can give you, you know, give you an example is to actually kind of like get really close to the camera. So you can see my eye really close like that. That's what I do in this right here. So I have a mirror that is here at all times and I can even get it to come closer to me. Uh, it takes a little bit of work for this video. And what I do is I can go like this and I can look at my eye and I can study my eye. And I prefer to do that than even looking at like an animal reference. I know it sounds really wacky, but um, animators who I'm friends with, cartoonists who I'm friends with, they keep big mirrors by their desk and they look in it and they make a face. So you can practice that. So like actually go like this and like make the face uh, the thing that you actually want to draw. <laughs> it's, I know I look like a weirdo, but uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, and just like get this like gross snarl going and then feel like actually go, oh, when I do that, the corner of my nose comes up. I should keep that in mind for the corner of my nose to come up. So I'm gonna jump back over here and one eye I'm gonna make really, really big and wide open. And the other one, going back to that face I made before, for some reason, one of my eyes closed. I'm like, oh, okay, one of my eyes closes, the other goes wide open. So I should make one eye wide open, the other eye closed. So I have this like squinting much more. This one's wide open. Maybe I'll already put like an eyeball in there. Um, so I'm seeing uh, some recommendations that we should use the wolf face. Um, so I agree. And so let's go back to our little clip here and let's find that wolf face and let's get some elements of that wolf face in our drawing. So, okay, the thing that we see with the wolf face is it's all teeth, man. It's so cool. So let's get the teeth going big time. And so the wolf face, um, it has its jaws kind of like locked. And the opossum face, the opossum face, has its mouth wide open. So I'm just going to combine them all together. I'm going to get the big teeth from the wolf. I'm going to get that open mouth from the opossum. I'm going to get the snarled eyes from the Kevin McAvoy, scariest creature of them all. And I'm just going to like stitch them all together. And already at this point, I'll switch over to a sharper pencil because maybe that's a little bit too light. Let's see if this one's a little bit better. And yeah, that's, that's better. And so now I'm getting these like really nice, like sharp lines that are like super specific. Like so. And then what I'll do is I'll give him more teeth going back. These are kind of like the, these are like the slicing teeth. These are like the tearing, chewing teeth back here. And then I'll put a few big teeth on the bottom. Um, I think it looks like my guy has had a lot of very nice civil visits to the dentist. And that's not what I'm going for. When I think of like a scary creature, I think of like, Dish, just like disheveled teeth, like disheveled is the wrong word, like this, just a mess of teeth. Like there's a certain species of deep sea fish that just have these crazy teeth that just go all over the place. That's what I want for my dinosaur. So I'm going to go in that direction. So I'm going to erase these like really nice clean teeth. And maybe what I'll do instead, I'm going to sharpen this pencil right here. And we're gonna get it over here a little bit sharper. And that's just a sheet of sandpaper right there. Now I have that nice and sharp. And then I'm back over here. And let's get some crooked teeth that look like they can just like, just do damage. Like, all right, that's feeling a little bit better. They're, they're changing in size. And then, yeah, that feels like it's so much better. All right, cool. Um, all right, so there's the dragon teeth in the front. Now I'm gonna have the teeth under, like kind of like point in different directions like this. And like so, okay. 
So we got the head like kind of like heading in a good direction. Um, now we want to get to the body. And so for the body, I like, I love this um, horned uh, lizard. I think I said the wrong name before, not a horned toad, a horned lizard. Um, I got, I love his like sharp lines right there. But then I also love the snake's like ribbon of a neck. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to put in like the ribbon of the neck. And as I put in the ribbon of the neck, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to, let's see here. I'm also going to put in some spikes early on. All right. So here's like the ribbon of the neck coming off to the side right here. And then let's get some of those spikes. And the spikes like kind of like stick off, but I, I want the spikes to be like kind of like all over the place. Usually there's spikes that come off the back of the neck, which is good and fine. But I think I want spikes to kind of come like also over here and they're going to like taper down in size. If you go back to our horned lizard, you can see that the spikes on the side, they get, they go from big to small. And I mean, look at that cool spike in the back of his head. The thing is so cool. And so my guy needs some kind of like a spike, just like him. And it goes small, a little bit bigger right here and a little bit bigger yet. And okay. So things are kind of like shaping up. I'll go back to the eye and I'll give it a little bit more definition. Um, all right. So now what I want to do is I'm um, kind of like locking in this area. Now I'm going to move a little bit bigger and broader and I'm going to think in terms of like, okay, so what's going on with the body, the body of the dragon. I think the closest we can get to it is like this right here. Um, we just essentially, we need like almost like a rib cage. And so I want to also think of the design of this dragon's belly. So like maybe that, will work right there. I'm not sure. Maybe this is almost like a circle and that's like a circle and those circles are too similar. So I'm going to make one smaller and the other bigger. So, all right. So for this, I'm going to make this circle come up a little bit higher and then that balances this off. But I like running to problems in front of you guys, because as I'm working, if I run into a problem right in front of you, then you know that I'm designing it in the moment that I haven't worked everything out. Here's the problem. If I move the body up higher, then I have no more room for the wings. So maybe what I want to do is move the body lower like that. And then maybe his tail wraps around something like that. That's his tail. And then that gives me a lot of room for some big, beautiful wings, which we're going to import from the bat. So, okay. So for the wings, we can go like this and we can just wrap around. I'm just going to put in a quick general shape, I'm not really too concerned about like the specifics of it. So I'll go back to my bat wing section and here I am and I'm like, okay, I know what that should probably look like now. So I jump back to my drawing. I'm like, okay, so then maybe this should come over. And then this, there's a point right here that everything emanates from. And then all like these, um, I'll call them like spines. It's definitely not the right word, but they just kind of fan out like that. And there is our dragon's wing number one. And so he, this guy's going to need two wings. And so I'll just like, I'll find his other wing at some other point. I don't really know where it is right now. Okay. So I now, what I know I want to do is I want to clean up some of these lines. Um, I'm not running into any problems at all in terms of the lines, but these are what I call searching lines. Like the early lines where you're just kind of like dancing around trying to find something. So let's, clean up, like, let's say the top of the body right here. It's 
So there is the top of the body. Let's clean up the neck as it turns. And again, if we want to see like the qualities of the neck, the thing that is probably good for us to do is to just go and look at nature. And so I'm a big advocate. Uh, one of the things I really try to teach in my classes is keep going back to nature and let nature really inspire you. So I love the way that the neck turns on this, the snake in that photograph. And so it, it has this like f this flat quality to it with such amazing dimension. And it's so much more interesting than anything Kevin McAvoy would come up with. So I, as I work with you guys, I'm always trying to say like, go beyond me, go beyond Kevin and get out into nature and like study nature for yourself and see like what you can be inspired by as you actually go around like your world. So, okay. So now as I'm looking at, at this area, um, I feel like it's going in a pretty good direction. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm then going to, I, I need to give him some kind of like back, like haunched legs. And for that, I don't have a reference for it, but I'm going to think of my dog Tess. So I have a dog who is, um, she is a, a mutt and she's a mix of like, I forget a hound and a pointer or whatever, but she is an absolute killer <laughs> she, of small animals. She will hunt down squirrels and she'll catch them. She'll hunt down po uh, opossums. She'll hunt down raccoons and all the power of her back legs is like this so like you look at her like when she's like ready to go and it's all potential energy so go like this with your own hands and feel that power or go like this with your legs feel the power that's like resonant in there so that's what we want to do over here so let's let's make some like a leg right here that's just filled with like all this potential energy and so it kind of comes like this and it's just this thing just has a lot of power in it and it's ready to go like that. Okay. So there's the back leg right there. Maybe we'll let the other back leg kind of like just disappear. Now the front leg, we all know with Tyrannosaurus rexes, they're these big, mean, you know, crazy dinosaurs, but they have these like tiny little arms that like can't like do much. And so, um, I don't know how I want to solve this. Do I want like really powerful arms or do I want like really tiny arms? I'm not entirely sure. Um, I saw a comment from, Gavin saying, could you maybe add fire in his mouth? Cause he's breathing fire. Um, definitely let's, let's try to get some fire <laughs> coming out of his mouth. Um, okay. So we'll try to like mass in the body as quick as we can so that we can move on to fire coming from his mouth. So he's got to have some shoulder blades going on right in here. And so to get this area figured out, I need to decide on what position he's in. And I think the position he's in is he's going to be like curled and his hands going to like turn like that because he's like turning from us and he has all this like energy, but the energy is right here for him to like jump and the, the front paw I'll say right here is kind of like, just like it's, it doesn't have much energy. It's just kind of like processing or something. So I'll return to that later. That's not really working so great, but it's not a problem yet. Um, I'm going to return over to the face. So I go back again to my mirror and I look at my mirror and I'm like, okay, I make the face. Now, if I was making like a really dorky dragon, that was like really wimpy. Um, I'd make a face like this and I'd look in the mirror and I try to figure out what was going on with that. So as I look in the mirror and I see this one huge eye that's like staring right out and the other eye that's like somewhat covered, um, I would, I would like just try to like emphasize these things and I could even go back again to like my wolf and I could try to see what's going on like with the wolf's face. So here's the wolf and the wolf is just, I mean, he is really cool and his nose is all flared up. So I'm going to try to get that real flared nostril right here of the dragon. And all right, so that's kind of like coming together. I'll keep on returning to all these different things. Um, any drawing like this, you're never going to have like something that like 
mm, or I should say you're rarely going to have something that totally works from early on, but it's going to have to be like ideas that you keep refining and maybe you refine it in this drawing. Maybe you start another drawing. So I usually, um, will work through the initial sketch and then sometimes I'll start another sketch with all these ideas, but kind of like cleared up even better. All right. So I gave him like ears that are swept back just like, you know, like turned away. And that's something I noticed with the wolf is that his ears are swept backwards. And so that kind of gives that like more of that, like snarl to his face, like right here. And then maybe I'll go back again and I'll take a look at that really nasty possum and I'll look at his mouth be like, okay, his mouth, he's got like the tongue coming out there. Now something's not working right here at the eyes and I don't know quite what it is. And so I think it's because the eyes are too flat. So maybe what I might do is I might try to give the eyes a little bit more dimension and to give them more dimension means like maybe, maybe I made it too big and it's making the head seem small. And so maybe I'll keep the eyes like one really wide open and one like more like, like snarling shut, but maybe I'll make the pin of the eye, the pupil of the eye, I should say much smaller. And then I'll put in this huge eyebrow that's like furrowed right here. So, um, I think I kind of like that better because that makes, that makes the head appear a little bit bigger by making the eye smaller. The big eye was almost making the whole head feel like really tiny. So, okay. So I have this going on. The nostrils are flared. I'm going to jump back. Um, I could refine the ear a little bit more. Maybe I'll give the ear a little bit more of a point. I have these kind of like plates that I haven't really worked out too much yet, but I'll put a few more of them in as he's like turning and all right, I'll give some more spikes in the back of his body right here. And then here's the underside of his stomach. Now I'm going to go a little bit more to the tail. And the tail kind of like wraps around like so. And let's get jump over to the wing. So I see one of you guys say that you're using as a reference, uh, a beetle for the mouth. That is such a good call. Um, that's exactly where I want you guys to go with these things. Um, I want you to kind of like take these things in directions that I wouldn't like I myself, like even have predicted, like if you use the a beetle for the mouth, if you use like the wings of like, I don't know, um, some kind of like a dragonfly, that's really cool. And now I'm going to kind of like reinforce the webbing. So the webbing like comes sometimes when you're doing something like webbing, you can even think of your fingers and how we have this like slight webbing, like right here. It's definitely, it's not truly webbing. So I'm not saying that we have webbed fingers, but I'm just saying there's a piece of skin right here in between the bones of our hand. And so it's almost like I'm thinking of that as I'm drawing his wing right here. And cool. All right. So that feels better. And I'm still yet again, I'm going to go back to the eye. I want to find like the perfect eye. And I, I just feel like I haven't found it yet. And one of the qualities that I liked of the wolf was the wolf, like his eyes, like were really vicious, but they weren't even there. So maybe what I need to do is have these, like these eyes that are really vicious, but like barely even there. Like, I don't know, but maybe that is the best yet. Yeah. You know what? I do like that. That is the best yet for me. Um, the first eye was just a little too cartoony. The second eye was getting in the right direction, but I like 
like when someone something is snarling, their eyes are not wide open. And so I like that right there. All right, so now um, I think it's a good time to put in a little bit of shade. Um, it's not that you know the, the outline is done, but I want to get a feeling of the broad sense of where we're going here. So what I'll do is I have all my graphite powder that I keep in like a little dish. And again, there it is right there. And then I go back to my drawing and I just take some of my hand and I just start smudging it in like this. So I say this on every time I use graphite powder. Um, if you're watching this, you're like, oh, I don't have any graphite powder. powder. That's okay. Um, you can just shade like this. And then once you've shaded like that, then you can take your finger and you can blend that. Uh, so you don't need to own graphite powder to do this. I do it on these um, coals. Um, first of all, I like it. And graphite powder is very easy and simple to get. You can just buy it online. Just look up artist graphite powder. Um, but then in addition to that, um, uh, it also makes everything go quicker for these videos so that I can give you more of a broad sense more of a broad sense of where things could go because we only have 45 minutes or so. So I just kind of like push it along to accelerate it. And now you can kind of see the whole thing coming into focus. Like I could push this drawing literally for another three or four hours easily. And every minute of the three or four hours, you know, I feel like probably it would just get better and better over the course of three or four hours. Um, but I do, I should, by the 45 minute mark, have a sense of the broad idea of the drawing and where it could go. I shouldn't be still lost in my drawing at this point. So I see uh, one of you guys, Vivi, yeah, you were saying the dragon's feet just looked like, like lion paws. You could um, definitely think of the feet as being lion paws. This isn't working right here yet. Um, so um, I take the pressure off myself. I say this all the time to you guys. Um, I will work with an idea. I, I get somewhat of an idea in, and then I, when it's just clumsy and it's not working, I, I just, I just return to it. And I try to like find something that works better, but I take the pressure off of myself for like trying to find, um, the perfect fit the first time. I kind of get like the general sense of something. And then I just return to it and I refine, I refine, and I refine. So that kind of looks like the front of a horse's uh, hoof. And you know what? I'm kind of okay with that. I kind of like that. So, all right. So this is going in a direction that I'm happy with. And we were, there was a question if, from one of you guys, if we could make the dragon's uh, mouth looked like it had fire coming out of it. So I'll try to get to that um, within the next few minutes. And the way that I would do that is, uh, it's this whole idea in drawing or in painting uh, where if you wanna make something light, so if you want flames to like appear on something, the way that you make it light is actually you make it look dark. And you can say like, that makes no sense. Well, if you have a very, very light room, let's say, and the room is just, it's just 12 o'clock in the afternoon, there's windows everywhere, and I take a lighter and I go like that, uh, and you look at that lighter, is it going to appear very bright? Like, not really, right? Um, whereas if I take that lighter and the room is pitch black, all the windows are closed, it's like midnight, and I flick that light, then that lighter is going to appear to be very bright, right? So as you work on your drawing, and you're thinking of flames, if you want to get like flames coming out, the way that you probably would do it is to darken a lot of the area around it. So maybe what I'll do is I'll even fast forward the drawing a little bit more and I'll get flames. I mean, I should say I'll get atmosphere going in a lot of the drawing. And I wasn't even thinking of doing this beforehand, which is why it's fun to do these uh, live streams with you guys, because you make me think of things that I don't even think of ahead of time. So here we are. I have like the, the shadow on the back of this guy's head. And then there's going to be flames shooting out over here. So let's try to 
race and see if we can get those flames in as quick as possible. So I'm gonna just, I'm moving my whole entire hand like that to try to really get like a general value on this drawing like so. And now it's time to shoot some flames across. So, you know, maybe I'll go even darker yet. Just grabbing that graphite powder. If you don't have graphite powder, you know what else you can do? You can sharpen your pencil with a basic sharpener. And as you sharpen your pencil with the basic sharpener, you're gonna have all the um, shavings like left over, right? And as you do that and you have those shavings, dump them into your hands and you'll come up with this. And so graphite powder is just like the inside of your pencil sharpener, just like left over. All right, so let's see if we can get some flames in here. So, all right, so the flames are gonna emanate from a source and they're gonna shoot out and they're gonna have like a curling quality to them. So I'm gonna try to get that curling quality to my flames as best I can. So, okay, so kind of like, like so. And there are ways that you can like sketch out like the patterns of flames, which would have to be like another class, but I'll do my best to like, just like kind of come up with something here. And that's pretty much um, just a quick rough out. And now I'm gonna draw in the reverse with like a blending stump. I'm gonna try to get like something like resembling a flame. I'm gonna go into that pattern that I just erased. And see if I can like carve out Pretty much, I'm regarding this as being like positive space. And then I'm carving out the negative space. I'm just, it's just a way of thinking to get like those flames like shooting out right there. And if I had more time in this class, standing over here, there would be some knight holding a shield and then the shield would be blocking the flames and the guy would be standing right there. Like that would be something pretty fun. All right, so now if there is light um, landing right there on my, uh, if there's light coming out of the dragon's mouth right here, then that means that the light is gonna cast onto this side of the dragon over here. So the light is gonna bounce over here. So we can erase away a little bit of light on the inside of his neck right here we can erase away a little bit of light on the top of his leg because the light is gonna hit here. We can erase away a little bit of light on the top of the tail down here, like so. And we can erase away some um, on like the vein, the, the webbing of the dragon right here. And so steadily you can see this guy kind of like turning into like a pretty cool, I think it's like kind of going in a somewhat of a cool direction. Um, and the light is starting to get like really dramatic. Um, so with that, you know, if you could develop this much further, and I think it's worthwhile for you guys to see a small study of a dragon that I uploaded um, in my other videos on the website. Uh, so that is the idea behind this dragon. Let me see if I can get this guy in focus. Here we are, yeah, you can roughly see that. <laughs> Uh, but that's the idea behind this dragon right over here, um, where I just, I took these ideas, I kind of put them in abstract shapes, like big shapes, and then I just ran with it and I just brought more detail and I brought more, you know, information into it. So um, I appreciate you guys jumping in for this lesson. Um, what I would suggest to you is if you're interested in developing a dragon further, head over to that course on the website that is, um, I think it's... I forget what it, the name of the course is, but you'll see it there. It's, it's called Dr Drawing a Dragon, and I go into way more detail with it, and I like, really like expound on it a lot.